Thanks for tuning in to the Inside Browns Report. I'm your host, Christian Patterson. Last week, the Browns took on the undefeated Patriots. The Browns entered this game two and four, coming off a horrible loss to the Seahawks. And the Patriots were seven and zero, oh, getting off to one of their best starts since 2015, when they started off 10 and zero. Oh. The Browns lost this game 27 to 13 and fell to two and five on the season. Entering this game, the Browns had a slight preparation advantage coming off bye week which gave them two weeks to prepare for the Patriots and clean up some of the things that hurt them in previous games, like costly penalties and turnovers. Also, the Patriots were coming off a short week because they had played Monday night football the week prior. But with all that said, it didn't change a thing. The Browns continued to beat themselves after going three and out on their first possession, the next three possessions ended in turnovers. Nick Chubb fumbled twice on two separate runs. One of his fumbles resulted in a touchdown for the Patriots. Also, Baker Mayfield threw an interception to a defensive lineman on a botched play. That put the Browns in a deep hole and they found themselves down 17 to zero at the end of the first quarter. The Browns did get within striking distance at one point after Baker found Demetrius Harris for a 21 yard pass that resulted in a touchdown before halftime. Then the Browns received the ball after half and drove down the field and Austin Seibert kicked a 38 yard field goal. That put the Browns within one touchdown. But Tom Brady immediately answered the Browns with the 84-yard scoring drive that ended with a 14-yard touchdown pass to Julian Edelman. You can't beat the Patriots when you lose the turnover battle, and the Browns continue to make costly mistakes that pull them down. The final score was Patriots 27, Browns 13. We're going to take a quick break but we'll be right back with more from the Inside Browns Report. Hi, I'm Mayor Frank Jackson. You've probably seen media coverage of the growing opioid epidemic in Northeast Ohio. But what you might not know is how many of these tragedies begin with a seemingly innocent prescription for pain medication. That is why we're teaming with the Cuyahoga County Opiate Marketing Task Force to encourage you to know the risk. Go to the website on your screen to learn which pills are opiates and alternative ways of dealing with pain. Which starts as a prescription can end with addiction, so know the risk. Hey, what's up? And welcome back to the Inside Browns Report. With nine games left on the season, the Browns have the second easiest schedule remaining in the NFL. This week, they take on the Denver Broncos in Denver. The Broncos sit at two and six, and they're missing one of their best pass rushers. The Broncos also traded away their best receiver, Emmanuel Sanders and their starting quarterback, Joe Flacco, is out with a neck injury. With all that said, it looks like the Broncos will be hitting the reset button and preparing for next season. On the other hand, the Browns still have a lot to prove, and that starts with head coach, Freddie Kitchens. With a healthy roster, Kitchens should be primed to put the Browns in the best position to win this game against the Broncos. As long as the Browns can minimize their turnovers and penalties, they should come out on top. I predict the Browns will beat the Broncos 27 to 10. Thanks for watching the Inside Browns Report. See you next week.